That apparent, I'm stressing apparent false alarm in France, just highlighting the fear of terrorism around the globe today, especially. It comes on a day that the fight against ISIS was complicated by an international incident as a NATO ally shot down a Russian fighter jet. That is a picture of what happened, the aftermath. French President Francois Hollande at the White House today trying to convince President Obama that working with Russia with Russia to destroy the Islamic State is indeed in the nation's interest. The French president seeking a, quote, grand coalition to take on the terrorist organization that's using black market oil largely to fund its so-called caliphate in Syria and western Iraq. President Obama saying today that the terrorists are a scourge that threaten all of us. Okay, we knew that, but dodging the question of working with Vladimir Putin and the Russians to stamp it down. Calling Russia and Iran a coalition of two, two nations supporting the regime of Syrian President Bashar Assad, which we know the United States would like to see removed. Two of the smartest men in the room are reading between the lines for us. Bob Hormatz, former Undersecretary of State for Hillary Clinton. We've got Cliff May, the president of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies here in the U.S. As we look at that, gentlemen, the increasing threat of terror attacks prompting the government to issue a global travel warning. Uh, we're going to take you live to JFK in just a moment to see how international travelers are taking the news. It's so much to swallow here as we watch all of this. I want to get right now to Bob Hormatz because this is a, a situation. And again, we're, we're talking both of a questionable hostage situation and whether there's any relation at all to what's going on. That's the breaking news right now. What happened today at the White House? Did it clarify anything, calm anybody down? Did you hear anything new? Because we did only one thing, and it came from Francois Hollande, shut down the border between Syria and Turkey. Well, I think that that is one element of it, but there's a, it's a very complicated set of issues. Now, on one hand, you have the Russians and the Iranians who support Assad. On the other hand, they have a lot of firepower in the region. If they were to turn it to ISIS, that would be very useful. But the fact is, for the moment, many of them really seem to be aiming more at our friends who are anti-Assad than ISIS itself. That's one complicating factor. The other is, you need Turkey, and the United States has to be demonstrating its support for the Turks. They're a NATO ally. Shutting down the border would help, but that is something the Turks are going to have I to I mean, we can show this plane going down again. And, yes. and it was a Russian jet who yes. was warned yes. 10 times in five minutes by, with all of the details of it, Turkey saying it shot down that plane as it crossed into territory from Syria. The two planes, there were two of them, ignored several warnings that they were nearing Turkish airspace. I mean, as I'm telling you, 10 warnings in five minutes. Yeah. Planes kept going, did not retreat. The incident marks the first time, I think, Bob, in half a century that a NATO member is downed a Russian plane. Russia, we should tell our viewers, is insisting that the plane stayed over Syria. President Putin said Turkey's action is, quote, linked to a stab in the back delivered to us by accomplices of terrorists. I cannot qualify what happened today as anything else. But uh, you look at that and you say, well, we're not going to have a friendly relationship right now with Russia to say, let's all band together against ISIS. No, we're probably not. And, they, and it, the, the White House has been very doubtful about working with the Russians in any case, because it may well be that their primary objective, which is to keep Assad in power, is not consistent with our primary objective, which is A, uh, to deal with ISIS, but also we've concluded that Assad being in power gives ammunition to the Sunnis in Syria who are supporting ISIS because he's going after those Sunnis. And, and it's horrible to say, but it is the truth, folks. We had uh, two terrorist attacks today alone in Egypt and in Tunisia. Cliff May is with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies president. Are we defending our democracy enough because these situations are, are seemingly spreading and creep? There's, there's terrorist creep, as I, as I guess I'm going to call it here. Does it come to us? Yes, it has come to us on various occasions, not just 9-11, the Tsarnaev brothers, of course, of course, in Boston. We have seen over the recent years terrorism spreading into more and more countries and more and more groups being involved in terrorism. And these groups are not enemies, they are rivals. So you have al-Qaeda, you have the Islamic State or ISIS, which is a splinter from al-Qaeda. And you have the Islamic Republic of Iran, which is largely responsible for the rise of ISIS. Iran is the arsonist that is now pretending to want to be a firefighter. And part of the problem here is that Russia 
has aligned itself with Iran and with its puppet Assad. Mm. And I think what Bob said is very key. If you want to fight the Islamic State, you have to have Sunnis in Syria and Iraq on your side, and they will not if the prize for fighting with you is that they will be dominated by Shia, Persian, Iran. And as this we, is a, and as we look ahead, at as we look at the creep, because you've got Thanksgiving two days away, people are terrified, very concerned about this. You you wonder what's going to happen. We still have the Syrian refugees banging down our doors. Canada, Cliff, and this is a democratic question. Canada is saying that they will only accept refugees who are parts of families, women, children, no single unaccompanied males. Do we need to do that? Yes, we need to have a pause. I think that's right. And I think we need to have a very robust, more than we do now, vetting process. There may be among these refugees people that will be very useful to us because they'll want to work with us in terms of intelligence and go back and fight and that sort of thing. But we cannot bring into the country people who either are agents of the Islamic State or are likely to become agents and be recruited later on. Right now is not the time to have massive immigration from the Middle East, from Syria, but not just from Syria, from other places too and I, I think this is a time for us and I would say for the Europeans to be very cautious and think about other things you can do about what's going on in the Middle East mm -hmm. beyond simply letting hundreds of thousands of people into your country who may pose tremendous problems in the days, months, and years to come. Let me let me just get our viewers caught up here. At the moment, we now see the market tacking on another 10 points. The Dow Jones Industrial is up 54 at the moment, uh, perhaps on the news that this latest hostage situation, by the way, involving Kalashnikovs, people shot, hostages taken at the border between Belgium and Paris, still happening right now but may not be related to any of the attackers who were in Paris November 13th. Bob, former Under Secretary of State, the U.S. State Department uh, has issued a global travel alert. Cliff, Cliff outlined the, uh, the, the sort of panoply. We've got al-Qaeda, we've got ISIS. Let's not forget Boko Haram in Nigeria. It's a total disaster right now, but uh, our markets are holding up and yet we do have terrified people in this country who are wondering, how do we keep ourselves safe. The president said, I, I finally understand how you feel. You know, he mentioned that during uh, the meeting with Alon. But what do we need to see versus here? Well, I think we've got to see a number of things. First of all, this is metastasizing. There are uh, there's a lot of evidence that uh, ISIS is not just in the center of what it calls its caliphate, but has these what they call distant or foreign provinces. So they're actually developing relationships in Sinai. They're developing relationships with Boko Haram. They're developing relationships all around the world. And they doubtless have cells or people here who are influenced by them. We have a global phenomenon here. We can't simply fight in the region, although I think we have to deal with the, with the power that's at the center, which is Syria and, and Iraq. But also we're going to have to work very hard with other countries with good intelligence to go after them wherever they are. And they're in a lot of areas. Well, the word metastasized is really disturbing, but I think it accurately uh, portrays what's going on. We want to thank you and Cliff so much.